touch life? I mean, when, when they rang me and told me that I wasn't going to be May 20th order, I mean, it is, it's longer. I would rather, I, I like to be kept active. Um, but July 11th is the bigger date, International Fight Week. It, it, it has the international appeal. Um, so you put the big big dog on the big date. So that's what they do on July 11th it is. And um, I'm planning on competing in, in a jiu-jitsu tournament, which is in Rome in April. Um, early April, so that'll be a nice little break and continue training, and it'll be good to keep active in, in another uh, sport. Tommy, you're the face of uh, Irish MMA, obviously, but that also comes at a price. It seems the UFC a bit apprehensive about returning to Ireland yeah. without you. How do you feel about that? That maybe they won't hold any of event there. I, I tell you what, that, that's an interesting. Right? We, we, I have the stadium locked down. You bring me back, and we can do we can do a stadium five times over. But we've got many. Athletes coming up, you know, Paddy Hullahan, uh, you know, many guys representing our nation that are on the way up. Like you could, I, I could easily see, like, and the fan base in Ireland. Let's let's talk about the fan base in Ireland. We have a serious fan base for the sport in Ireland, not just for me. A lot of people know me and, and don't know the sport yet, but it's crossing over. But even before that, there's a serious, serious fan base. You go back to UFC '93 when they first came to Dublin. It sold out, and there was no one on the card. No one even knew about it, but there was still that cult following. Let's talk about yesterday at the Q and A. There was. The amount of Irish people here for this event alone, some guy stepped up to the microphone with an Irish flag wrapped around him and he said, uh, ask me my opinions on Nick Diaz, we are uh, fans, he said we are fans of Nick Diaz, we have followed him around the world for the past six years watching his fights. So that's the kind of fans we have in, in Ireland of the sport, let alone me. So we could easily, uh, we could easily bring it back with, with or without me. You put Paddy Hulan, you put Carl Pendry, you put these guys on the card. And we could do the O2 again, easily. You know, Jose Aldo has been described as the kind of fighter that if you push him, he'll push back even further. If you don't push him that much, he might, quote unquote, coast to a victory. I know you're very confident, but how do you see him stylistically? Because certainly, you're going to push it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sprint straight for him. I won't give him a second. I'm going to go in with my hands raised. I'm going to be talking to him while I'm whooping him at the same time, the same way I do to them all. Uh, I, I feel Aldo has made a career out of being short, stocky wrestlers that are not good on the feet and more more intimidated on, on the feet and they shoot from halfway across the cage. I'm going to go in, I'm going to break him, I'm going to be on top of him from the bell. I, I will break Jose Aldo. And we should ask about that confrontation you had after your fight. I know we've talked about it a little, you talked about it at the Q&A, but what did you feel like you saw in his eyes when you jumped out there? Um, I saw his eyes turn to glass, yeah, you can laugh and you can smile all you want, but I could I could see, you know what I mean, he, where, where was he when it was time to step into the cage, you know what I mean, he was, he was flown over to, to step into this cage, but all of a sudden superstition, he was superstitious for some reason, he doesn't step inside the cage, and that's fun, unless he's fighting, but that's funny because there's many occasions where he hasn't been in the cage, where he hasn't fought, superstitions to me is another word for fear, I will break him mentally and I will break him physically. Yeah. Well, he's not used to it. He's not used. He, he, Aldo is not used to uh, talk, uh, fresh talk a lot with his opponents. Well, he brought a poster to your fight. Yeah, it was cute. <laughs> <laughs> How did you see that? Do you think you were kind of getting to his uh, mind? Well, I thought a it was bit? a stupid little poster. I mean, they make these little videos and these stupid posters. It's, it's amusing to me. Yeah. He was in a little king outfit or something, a little, little cheap piece of shit it was, to be honest. Um, but I don't care really. You know? I am going to go in and I'm going to break him and that's, that's all there is to it. Is it you, not more fun having an opponent who is willing to sort of indulge you with this stuff a little bit? It is, it is what it is. I'm not trying to get anybody to indulge me in anything. I'm just I'm just calling it like it is, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure for the fans, the fans enjoy it and it, and it, and it builds it up. And, but me, it's business. Do you, you think because you're so it. unpredictable, that's maybe what Jose fears the most is he has no idea what's coming? I, I, I would say I would say so. Yeah, I I don't fight like anybody else. I don't throw shots like anybody else. I don't move like anybody else. So it's hard to prepare for a guy like me. And then you're talking with the with the pressure bubble that comes with fighting me. It's not like fighting a normal man. I don't think people realize that until they are involved in it. And then there's these type of things going on. I mean, people shut down with that. Emotions play a big big part in in, in combat. So but for me, it's another day. I'm I've been doing it since I'm day I'm I'm in here. So. We will see. I, I feel co confident that he will not be able and not be able to handle what I bring.